I spent the last video defining the idea of a group. Let me now dive into one particular group, the group D4, the symmetries of the square. These symmetries are transformations in R2. And there are five basic types of transformations in R2, rotations, reflections, skews, dilations, and projections. Skews change squares into tilted parallelograms, so they can't be symmetries of the square. Dilations pull various directions inward or outward, so they also can't be symmetries. And projections collapse down to a line, so they are definitely out. In R2, only reflections and rotations are possible. So what reflections and rotations? Well, to send the square on top of itself, I can do a quarter turn, a half turn, or a three quarter turn. And these are the only rotations that take the corners of the square back to the corners of the square. Other rotations end up with, with a square that doesn't line up with the original. So these are the three rotations. You might ask, well, what about a full turn? That is also a symmetry indeed, but the full turn just sends everything back to itself. A full turn does nothing. So a full turn is just the identity transformation. So we have three rotations and the identity, four row tra transformations so far. Then what about reflections? Well, there are four lines of reflections that will preserve the square. I've labeled them F1, F2, F3, and F4 in this diagram. And feel free to convince yourself that these are indeed the only lines of reflection that will preserve this square. This is the group D4. There are eight elements, the identity, the three rotations, and the four reflections. The operations, the multiplication is composition of the transformation. Equivalently, if I write the elements as a matrix, this is matrix multiplication. This is also the general form of these dihedral groups. For an n-sided polygon, there will be two n elements in the group of symmetries, the identity, n minus one transformations, and n reflections. So there are 10 symmetries of the pentagon, 12 symmetries of the hexagon, 16 of the octagon, and so on. I'm gonna keep working with the square, but many of the patterns that I'm going through here work nicely for any polygon. What I want to do now is show you a really efficient way to calculate the compositions for D4. I could write the transformations as matrices and do all the matrix multiplication, but this me method is faster and also much more intuitive. If I have the square as before, I can label the four vertices one to four in a counterclockwise order. Then each transformation is entirely determined by what it does to the vertices. The rotation R1 is rotation by a quarter turn counterclockwise. What does this do to the vertices? Well, it sends one to two, two to three, three to four, and four to one. This is enough to entirely determine this rotation. I'll call this a vertex operation, determining where the vertices go under the transformation. F2 was the reflection over this diagonal line. What does it do to the vertices? Well, it keeps one and three the same since they are on the line. But then it flips two and four, sending two to four and four to two. So these are the vertex operations for F2, and everything I need to know about F2 can be boiled down to these operations. The great advantage of this system is that I can use the vertex operations to understand composition. Let me take the two I've already described and compose them, R1 composed F2. With the composition order, this means I do F2 first, and then R1. Well, what did F2? do? It kept vertices 1 and 3 the same, and it switched 2 and 4. So I write down that transformation here. Then I use R1. Well, what did R1 do? It sent 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and 4 to 1. So then I apply that to the vertices that came out of F2. Put together, I get a new transformation that sends 1 to 2, 2 to 1, 3 to 4, and 4 to 3. What transformation is this? Well, if I draw it out and look at all eight possibilities, it's reflection over the vertical line. I called this F3. So by using the vertex operations, I can calculate that R1 compose F2 is F3. That's one of the calculations in the group D4. And I'm now learning how to do that group multiplication in a clear and efficient way. Now let me do it the other way around. F2 composed with R1. In this order, I do R1 first. R1 sends 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3 to 4, and 4 to 1. So I write these vertex operations. Then I apply F2. 
One and three were unchanged, but two and four were flipped. The result is a transformation that sends one to four, four to one, two to three, and three to two. Again, out of the eight possibilities, which one is this? Well, this is the reflection over the horizontal line, which I called F1. F2 composed R1 is F1. This is another calculation in the group, and a good demonstration of the non-commutativity of this group, because when I change the order, I get a different result. If I do all the possible calculations in this group with the vertex operations, I get this. This is a multiplication table. Much like the multiplication tables you would have studied for numbers, but now this is a multiplication table for the group D4. And every group has a multiplication table, and the multiplication table completely describes the structure of the group. I calculated that R1 composed with F2 was F3. Well, here is that square. The composition here is row composed with column, so that the column acts first. I also calculated F2 composed R1, which is F1, and here is that square. And the rest of this table comes from doing all the other transformations and compositions the same way. Algebra cares about structure. This multiplication is the structure of the group D4. Everything I need to know about D4 is here. There are some interesting patterns here. See how there are diagonal lines of the same transformations? See how the identity shows up. In particular, the identity shows inverses. R3 composed R1 is the identity, which means that R3 is the inverse of R1, since that was the definition of the inverse, something that you multiply by to get the identity. For the reflections, every reflection is its own inverse, since F1 composed with F1 is the identity, and this also makes some sense, since doing a reflection twice undoes the reflection, returning everything back to where it was, and that's the identity. That's all I'm going to say about groups for now, but I'll leave some more multiplica multiplication tables and vertex operations for you to do in the activities and the assignments.